Okay, welcome to chapter eight. This chapter, I want to talk about just working with data in Blender and importing assets and such. But the first thing that I really want to try and hit on is uh, understanding how Blender handles objects versus data. So basically everything that we work with in Blender as far as objects go, you know, we think of as either meshes or curves or cameras or lamps, etc. Well, Blender doesn't really care what an object is except for its you know, base type. So all mesh objects are mesh objects. All curve objects are curves. But when we break down and consider the difference between, say, these three mesh objects, Blender doesn't really care what the difference is as far as the object level. It merely applies a name to it, and that's it. We can see that you know, if we look at, say, the cube here, and we can go into the object properties, we have all of the things that relate to that object, its position, its orientation, any transform locks we've applied to it, its display types, so forth and so on. But what about the actual data that makes up that object? The actual data is, of course, our mesh itself, all the vertices, polys, and edges that make up that object. But the only difference between this object and this object as far as Blender is concerned, is that actual mesh data. And so this is the difference between Blender's objects and data, where first we have basically an object, which you can just think of as a container for that type of data. So in this case, we have mesh data, and this cube is just what happens to contain that mesh data. And you can actually see this more clearly if you go to the outliner here, and we've got our cube selected, we can see that it's a, it's a mesh, as illustrated by the triangle icon, and we have a cube, is the name. But if we toggle this down, we can see that this cube is made up of another cube. Well, in fact, the object just happens to be named cube, and then the data that that object contains is also named cube. And you can see this data specifically, and what applies to that data if you go to the object data section. And here we have the actual data that's being referenced by our selected object, and we have all those things that relate to the specific data, such as vertex groups, shape keys, UV maps, vertex colors, but what's very cool here is if we look at the object, we can see that we can toggle this down and we can apply any other object to this. So we could make it the monkey, we could make it a sphere, we could make it any one of these. And so this will just go through and select those objects. So this merely shows the selected object and allows us to select any other object through this. However, if we go to, say, the cube, and we go back to the object data here, this, changing this will not actually change the object itself, but will change the data that it references. So for example, if I just choose monkey here, then my cube, which as far as the object is concerned is still a cube, but as far as the data is concerned is now my monkey, because this is the actual mesh data and the cube is nothing more than a named container. And so this is very, very cool because it allows us to uh, basically free our data from our objects. And you can see that all of the orientation is controlled via the object container, but then all the mesh data itself is in the data. And so this gets into also users of data. So if you take a look at now, we can see that our monkey data, which whether we select our original cube or our actual monkey, you can see that they both use the exact same data and that this one here, it, it now has a two on it, meaning that there's two different objects that are referencing that data. And if we go in and update one of them, the other one also updates. So if I go in here and give him a spiky head or pull out his ears or anything like that, you can see it's being applied to both, or actually not just both, but all references of that data. And so this allows us to make what are called linked objects, where we can actually just have multiple objects referencing the same data that then will automatically update across any of them. But since this is on the object, we can still scale, rotate, move at that object any way that we wish, and it's not gonna change the actual data because all of those transforms are managed via the container. If you go into edit mode, and you scale, rotate, or move, then it does affect it because now we're working on the, the data level rather than the object level. And this applies to basically every kind of object in Blender. It's not just meshes, it's also lamps and cameras. So if you select the lamp here, we can see our lamp object. And then you go over here, you can see our lamp data. So if I duplicate this lamp, we now have a new set of data, lamp.001 and lamp.001 as the object. 
But if I just go here and just reselect the original lamp, that then has two lamps referencing the same data. And if I go through and change, say, the size and maybe the color on this one, and I go back over to the other, you can see it's applied that same thing to both of them. If you want to duplicate, you know, if you're doing this intentionally and you want to duplicate an object and just already have it with the linked data, you can simply hit Alt D rather than Shift D and it will create a linked version of that. The other way you can do it is if you hit Shift D and then hit F6, you can just choose linked and it will just reference the original data rather than duplicating the data. So this is very, very valuable in Blender for updating all kinds of things or re replacing things. Uh, you can do it with rigs, you can do it with lamps, cameras, suns, lattices, every kind of object available in Blender has an object container and object data, uh, except maybe, except actually the empty because an empty is nothing more than an empty object. There is no data per se associated with that. So this is very, very handy and works very well for managing data and making sure that things are applied. This also works very well uh, and it applies as well to materials, where if I add a material to this sphere and I just name it shader, and then I go in and I select my monkey and I choose that same shader material and apply it there, you can see that we now have two users of this data. And so both of these are using the same material. And this is fairly normal behavior. This is kind of what you would expect. But again, if I now press the two, then all of a sudden I have two separate references or two independent pieces of data that then are no longer linked together. Uh, the last thing that I wanna look at with this object versus data thing is fake users. So the one thing in Blender that um, can frustrate a lot of people initially uh, until you wrap your head around it is how to delete data. For example, if I go in here and I delete this sphere, and by the way, let's just check, you can see that our, our mesh data is sphere. But if I delete this, and now I select my monkey here, and I choose my data, our sphere data still exists. The object is gone, but the data is still there. But you can see that it now has a zero next to it. And a zero means that there is zero users referencing that data. And so it's basically just, you know, sitting there unused. And there's no, and uh, on the surface, there's no way to delete this. Well, if you have thousands of objects and you've deleted a whole bunch, you, you don't want all of these in here. But the way that you clear this out is you simply save your file and reopen it. And any object that has zero users referencing its data will then be removed. Or excuse me, any, any data that has zero objects or users referencing it though that data will then be removed. And this applies to all kinds of data, everything from uh, mesh data, materials, even actions within animation, so action sets of keyframes, uh, will all be removed upon reloading the file if it's set to, set to zero. The way that you prevent this, let's say that I want, to, I want to keep my sphere data. I don't want to have it deleted. Maybe I'm just using it for to reference it, or maybe I only want a single object in my scene, but then I wanna be able to swap out the mesh data very quickly. The way that you do this is you simply choose the F key, and the F key will add a fake user, such that now you can see that even though I only have one object that's actually using the sphere data, it has a two next to it, because as far as Blender's concerned, since it has the fake user, there's actually two users using it, and it will no longer remove that data upon reloading it. So now if I switch this back over to, say, the, the cube, and I look at my list, I can see Sphere now has an F next to it, so it has a fake user. And this is the way that we basically save unused data within our blend file for using later. And it's the same thing for materials. So if I go to materials, I can see that my shader now has zero users because no object is referencing it. Well, maybe I want to, I want to keep it in because maybe I'm creating a shader library or material library and I want to have this big long list of materials, but I only want one test object in my scene for actually sampling my rate, my material. Well, then what you do is you just add the plus sign to, or the F to add a fake user. You can then delete that, add a new one, and you can see that it now has an F next to it. So upon reloading and saving, it will not delete that data and instead keeps it for you. And it's the same thing, and this is actually a crucial point here now, is if we go into our dope sheet and take a look at the action editor where we can see all of the different actions or sets of keyframes on our object. And just to demo this, let me insert a quick keyframe here. 
move this over, insert another one. And so now I have an action on my cube that's being animated. And you can see it's cube action. And you know, maybe this is cube underscore slide, who knows, or it could be walk cycle or whatever your action happens to be. Well, if I now want to do a new action, because maybe I've got my slide left and then I want to slide or jump up or something like that. Well, I would just hit the X and then I would go back to my beginning, maybe insert a new keyframe, go up, move my, my cube up, insert another keyframe, and then I have my next action. And maybe this is cube underscore up, who knows? If I now save my file and close out of Blender, the next time I reopen my file, my cube slide is going to be gone because it has zero users making use of that data. And so it's, this is Blender's way of cleaning out unused data and allowing you to keep your Blend file clean. And so this, you know, whether wrong or right, it just assumes by default that when you remove a reference from the data, it's no longer being used and so it'll clean it out. So if you're working with animation and creating lots of different actions, just be sure that you go in, select your, the action that you want, add a fake user to it, and now it will be kept no matter what you do on that object or on that action. So a general rule of thumb when animating, particularly when doing say game animation and you're working with a lot of different uh, specific looped actions and such, always add a fake user to your action such that it doesn't get removed upon saving and closing.